Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is uh, Sunday, October 17th. Can you believe it's past the middle of October already? How did we get here so fast? <laughs> Man, September didn't seem like it even happened. Uh, just been so busy around here. So uh, this video uh, today is going to be... So the last video you saw, Hive 1. Uh, I call it the suicide swarm, tiny swarm, whatever. It's a little swarm. I've been trying to build it up to a 10 frame deep. And it's middle of October. They're, they're not going to make it. So I'd say they're about two-thirds of the way. They're too big for a five frame nuke, not big enough for a 10 frame. So what I do have is I got some options that I can deal with them. So even though it's a tiny swarm, it's a good queen. So she's a good viable queen, uh, seems to be. And swarm queens are usually some of your most uh, prolific uh, uh, layers and all that in their first year. That uh, she had lack of resources and it was so small she just couldn't do much with what she had. But uh, I think she's a good queen. We got her marked white. So I've got two hives that are questionable right now. So hive six, the cells that uh, are getting capped have little tiny domes and it looks to me like she's laying drones so that hive uh, had a hard time getting it requeened the history of it throughout the summer and they finally got one going there at the last minute uh, but uh, she's not a real big queen and I think she may not be any good so hive 27 in addition the huge swarm <laughs> so from has it been two years since I caught that swarm? It was really huge. It was big. And uh, I snipped it off with loppers up in a tree. I was standing in the back of my truck on a ladder. All the safety police got onto me. And uh, it was so heavy, I was really braced and uh, to hold that thing when I, when I cut it. And it came down and it was so heavy, I couldn't hold it. And it came down fairly slow and I was giving it all I had to hold that thing up. I was in an awkward position and it actually pulled my shoulder out of socket a little bit <laughs> when it came down and when that happened uh, I, it came down a little bit faster after that and a lot of bees fell off in the back of my truck so I had to grab a big box put it in the truck captured it it's a cool capture you should go back and find that uh, in the playlist so hive 27 the past huge swarm they're superseding right now last weekend I went in there and uh, they were doing fine and it's it's a good strong 10 frame single deep and i was going through there and i didn't find the queen i thought well i just missed her and then i got to a a frame and it had two really big nice super seizure cells on it so i'm like what what are you doing so i guess that queen failed uh and that's a new queen this year as well so she was marked white so we got two hives that are possibilities we can combine with number one so uh, i don't know if i'll move number one over to one of those or move those over to number one and put it underneath uh, hive six really in that strong uh, hive 27 is a good strong hive so that one will make it through the winter and it had plenty of brood uh, and larva so there's the winter bees in there that we need so let's get into hive 27 and hive six and evaluate those and see, have those supersedure cells opened? Uh, do we wait on that queen to see if it will mate and start laying? Man, I don't know. It's getting to be late October. There's not many drones around and the ones that are left are gonna get the boot here pretty quick. Uh, we're close to our first frost and that's, that's when they get the boot. So, uh, and hive six is not very strong. So let's get in both of those and check them out. Let's get going. Hey, real quick, before we get started, I wanted to show you something on this Guardian Bee Apparel jacket uh, that they sent me. So uh, when I did my product review, uh, they notified me and said, hey, thanks for the great product review, but uh, you did it backwards on the zipper. So the, what, the way you're supposed to do this is you do, it's the right side first, and it's got this little extra piece sticking out. And that tucks underneath, and then the left side goes over it. So you only have one ring hanging down, not two. I think I did have one down, but I had it backwards. So uh, 
Yeah, let me show you real quick. So start on the right side first. And get your zipper all the way to the end of that little tab. So it's to the end. Now this ring is going to go underneath, get out of the shadow. So this little ring is going to go underneath the uh, other. So we'll do the other side. So this here is going to tuck in some good lighting here. So it's underneath. Now I'm going to pull this over it. So just like that. So now there's one ring sticking out instead of two. And the hole, oh, I still don't have it all the way. So now the hole was real tiny and this and one ring hanging out and that goes right over it like that. So be proof. Okay. Let me show you one more thing and then we'll get started over, uh, we'll start on 27. So I put out some uh, open feed, two to one, and uh, I mixed it uh, 25 gallon bag to one and a half gallons. And I used these uh, two gallon buckets and the plastic lids and the lids have holes drilled in the bottom about 20 holes a piece and uh, the bees haven't found it yet but when they do man it's going to be crazy but uh i got all my supers off now so so as soon as they find this uh, yeah it'll be a feeding frenzy here and i got them sitting on those little sticks to uh, keep them up off the bottom so there's actually uh, some fluid drip down formed on the bottom before uh it formed its vacuum so the wind is out of the opposite direction so they're not going to smell it unless they fly back by over here but uh, it won't be long so uh, yeah like i said i've got my supers off and also i've got uh 10 tablespoons of actually 12 tablespoons of pro health uh, in that four gallons so that mix 25 pounds of sugar a gallon and a half of water uh, makes four gallons so it fit perfect in these little two gallon uh, buckets here so yeah uh, probably by the time i get done i might run back up here and show you but it ought to be a ought to be a feeding frenzy <laughs> okay here's how 27 here one with the brick on it so the brick's my uh, calling card reminder that this hive needs to be looked at so got it reduced down pretty good uh, so all the hives have had four rounds of oxalic acid treatment and I did the mite check. I haven't done any other checks. I need to, but time's pressed and uh, I need to check this hive. That's my priority right now. So let's get in here and see what we find. Okay, we got lots of bees up here on the top. I'm going to give them just a little puff of smoke here. Because if we got us a uh, virgin queen in here, I don't want to run her off down off the frames. And we'll look up here on the lid first. No queens. So I think my cells were on frame seven right there. So while we're in this hive, we want to uh, evaluate the food stores going into winter. Uh, if I recall, it was in pretty good shape. Uh, this hive has been fed pretty well. I used a top feeder. So I could really uh, get quite a bit in here. And I was feeding the uh, one to one at that point. Yeah, so there's a lot of nectar in that, or syrup. So there's a lot of syrup there. And that's capped with some syrup on the bottom. It's just a heavy frame, a lot of food in there, nectar and honey capped. Virgin Queen is right here. Right there. So see how it's symmetrical? That means that queen emerged. 
If the hole's on the side, it means the other queen killed it. Yep, the other cell was right there. Yeah, so this is a good strong hive, but it's not queen right. And it's, and it's late fall, uh, or it's late October. So yeah, uh, this is a good resource if we've got a good queen. So we do have a good queen in hive one. So we could put hive one on top of this, or we could put this on top of hive one over there, or put it under hive one over there. Uh, you want the biggest colony on bottom so the heat goes up. And I would use a double screen board that has separate entrances. So I could put the top hive entrance to the back and this hive entrance would be normal. But uh, we're gonna wait and see if uh, these queens, uh, that queen gets mated. So if that queen gets mated, we're good to go here and we'll uh, leave it alone. But uh, I'm not holding out uh, hopes for that. Cause it's just the wrong time of year to be superseding. It's not a lot of drones, but uh, maybe they'll get it done. Okay, let's get over to Hive 6 and check it out real quick. Here's Hive 6, and I've got the entrance choked way down because uh, I had a little bit of robbing going on last time I was over here and opened it up. So I made that entrance as small as I could before I got out of there. So weight wise, Hive 6 isn't too bad. It's just not a real strong colony. It's had a late start uh, having a good queen till late in the summer and now they, that queen doesn't look very good. One of these days, I'm gonna fix this. <laughs> So we've still got our frame feeder in here. With the recent rain that we had, uh, the bees, so there was, was a little bit of nectar flow, I believe it was asters, and uh, the bees weren't touching the nectar as, uh, they were taking it, but it was slow. So a little bit of syrup in that, not a whole lot. Not much weight to that frame. A little bit of syrup in there and there. Not many bees out covering these outside frames. Most of our bees are right here. Just working our way over. This one has a little more weight. Yeah, there's quite a bit of syrup in that one. I believe I rearranged this and put the empty frames closer to the feeder there. Yeah, this is full of uh, syrup. I'd say about two thirds full these last two frames. Here we should be getting into our bees. Syrup. Uh, this is syrup as well. So this frame, or this, this hive, the capped cells are protruding a little bit. And I think they're drones and I don't think they're healthy. So here's our queen in the shadow right here so see she's fairly small but she looks okay but see these cells how they're sticking up and when they cap them it's a little bit of a dome and i'm thinking they're drone larva and she's shooting blanks unfertilized eggs you can see them a little bit better from this angle but uh so there's not enough bees in this hive so got a queen right here let's get her in there quick i don't think she's any good uh there's not enough bees in this hive this is a definite combine uh they won't make it the way it is and this is all nectar so very little brood i think what i'll do i'm going to pull this queen and I'm going to do a uh, newspaper combine right now on these two hives. And then we'll reduce it down to a single after that. Because you don't want to double two weak hives. Uh, 
and then we'll give 27 more time. So that's the plan. Let me go get some newspaper and get my uh, alcohol bottle that's got my queens in it for my swarm lure and we'll put her in there and uh, you're fired. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so something to notice just in this short amount of time, I had that open and uh, look at the bees floating around in here, uh, robber bees. So they got scent of that frame that I had sitting out. And uh, they're just flying all around here. So uh, we don't want to leave that thing open very long again. Okay, let's get in here and find our queen and get her in this clip. Just going to get right over there. And there she is. So we're going to lose some of our field bees, that's okay. Let's get over and get hive one ready now. I'm going to leave that feeder in here because when I do the final combine, I'm going to pull empty frames out, get rid of both feeders, and get them all together. A lot of times you can push down on this paper and uh, that propolis will hold it in place. I'm going to give them a couple little slits over here on the side. Set this on there for now. All these, I think, are robbers. I'm going to smoke inside here. So the bees in there will get on the frames and start sucking honey and uh, they won't leave while I'm moving it. So I'm going to take uh, this slatted rack over and I'm going to knock those bees right in the top of that top box so we can collect them. So now I'm going to put the lid on this and pull it back against that notch so bees can't come and go out of here. Okay, so We've got six and one combined. I was wanting to hold out longer on six, but uh, gosh, she just, I, that those larvae, and she just kind of limped along for the last couple months, just not producing much. So yeah, it's time to cut losses, and uh, that takes our hive count down to 29, which is fine. Uh, 29's a lot of beehives, <laughs> it is for me. So, uh, we, you know, 30 is the, the goal, I try to go plus and minus that. So in the, in the late spring, I might be at 35, 36, and then uh, by the fall, I may be at 26. So, you know, that's how it goes. And uh, so this, they will acclimate slowly through this newspaper. And I was hesitant to combine them just right off the bat, pull that queen and jam them together. Uh, I've had uh, some uh, bad results doing that, I think. And what caused it was that the, they would supersede that queen because they would think, oh, our queen's got a problem, when really that was the other queen that was causing the problems. And uh, I did that with the other drone laying hives. So, uh, yeah, so this will get them a slow uh, acclimation, and then we can reduce it down to one deep. And uh, if 27 doesn't work out, uh, we'll. Uh, either move this down on top of 27 or move 27 over here and put underneath this one because uh, 27 is a good strong hive so that'll make this a, a pretty full double deep so they'll overwinter okay and that'll bring our hive count down to 28 which is which is just fine so uh, anyway 
that is the end of the video i hope it was informational and you liked it give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe on your way out we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video y'all take care